I'm Jermaine Stone, Bronx, New York, born and raised, wine expert, podcaster, food lover, and ambassador for the culture. I'm traveling city to city looking for unexpected unions between amazing dishes and great wines. I think that wine just hit me. <laughs> I'll be going from temples of cuisine to street carts to backyards, matching whatever tastes good with whatever sounds great. Bringing my favorite wines with me everywhere. Really I toast to that. We're in Pilsen, which is an art district. This is where you'll find most artists have their art studios. It is a beautifully traditional neighborhood with a lot of Hispanic heritage. I've lived here for 30 years. Wow. And I have my art studio here. A lot of artists will start their mural career here because there's just so much real estate to paint on. I'm in Chicago meeting local artist Jenny Viez, who got a dope culinary crawl planned for me to pair my favorite wines to. But before we do that, she's taking me to have an El Pasto taco with a twist. This is Pilsen Yard. The owners started this whole space as an invitation to artists to showcase work. Jenny's introducing me to her artist friend, Roger J. Carter, whose art is hanging at Pilsen right now. This is like an image of uh, James Baldwin. It was, it was basically my favorite artist growing up. You know, I kind of understood his struggle and um, our struggle in this country as uh, black Americans. Kind of like three different images. You know, it's the painting that you see far away. You can see the texture when you come up close to it. And then if you look from the side, you can see the, the actual battle. So you don't really know what side the soldiers are on. You don't know if they're on the side of good or if they're on the side of evil. And I think we're at the point now in this country where we, we got to make a decision. <laughs> you know, who, who, who are we riding with? It actually opens up the space, but it also draws you in. Yes. You know, when people walk in, they're going to walk right to it. Yeah. And then they're going to like, oh, wow, that's that's cool. Uh, I like that. You know, let me let me get some tacos, too, yeah. while I'm here. Right? I'm JC. I'm the chef at Pils and Yards. So the taco has chicken, which is unique stuff, because pastor tacos usually with pork. Marinade made with some Mexican peppers, guajillo, morita, onion, garlic, vinegar, caramelized pineapple, cilantro onion, and lime. This ain't no taco you make with a tortilla. It's got its own special vibe, a cheese shell. I'm 100% Mexican, so I try to bring out the flavors from Mexico, but nobody has a taco made of cheese, you know? All right. Look, Pastor see. tacos for you guys? Ooh, yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. So this is a cheese shell cheese taco? Shell, yeah. it's more than just a few artists here. You were yeah, artists right. yourself. I try to do my best, you know? Yo. You don't think about a cheese shell right. and how that would actually work with this, but there's so much cheese in the taco, it's just... Yo, this is perfect. And I think like that pineapple in it just like complements it so beautifully with all that um, salty and savoriness. I, I really like what they're doing here because it's not a traditional gallery space. It's approachable compared to a gallery. I think uh, anybody can just come in and feel comfortable. I mean, if I had people from out of town say, hey, I want to come see some of your work. Can I come by your studio? I'm like, no, but you can go by Pilsen Yards and, <laughs> and, you, and you can see my piece yeah. and you know, get some tacos uh, or whatever. It's almost for me like what I'm trying to do with wine. I want to bring wine into a space where people can enjoy it in the way that you would just enjoy it on an everyday basis. Chicago is known for its amazing food, including deep dish pizza. Perfect example of how this city takes something great and goes deeper. It's been elevated to an art form here. So with Jenny as my guide, I'm diving headfirst into the art scene where it collides with food, and wine. I want to take you to some of my favorite spots here. Yes. There's an Indian restaurant that holds a very special meaning to me. It's a progressive Indian restaurant, which is really different than your normal Indian cuisine that you would eat. 
Awesome. And then I want to take you to a local sandwich shop, which I love because it also has a love story tied to it mm. with the founders. Like and then it. we're going to check out some art at a gallery where I have my art and with other artists. And so also... Humble. <laughs> so humble, so humble. And also take you to my art studio. Oh, all right, I get the exclusive It's a very private look. space, which I'm very excited to invite you to. I look at wine really like art. All of these winemakers are artists. And so finding different places that they can express themselves where they're not usually, that's kind of my thing. What do you think it means when a wine has underlying herbal notes? You want to take this first? Uh... Pass. <laughs> I'm thinking like nighttime tea. Think about like um, herbs that you cook with. And, eating. and underlying is not the first thing you're tasting. You no know, wine can evolve while it's in your mouth. At the end of it, like right when it's just about gone, is that mm, there's some underlying herbal notes, like right on the end of it. So. Chicago has the second largest Indian community in the United States after New York City. Jenny is taking me to eat the cooking of a chef who's making progressive Indian dishes. But Jenny also has another reason for loving this place. You mentioned some of your artists here also, oh, right? That's my art right there. Oh, this is yours? That is my work. Yo, that's crazy. It feels like it just came with it. Dude, oh, thank you. Dope. I mean, it was very much designed to go with the story of Rue, which is progressive. And one of my genres, bodies of work, is Indian progressive women who are still rooted in their culture. The heavy jewelry, the flowers in the hair, this is all super traditional. However, the look on her face was so important to me because when you walk in, I want her to really tell you that, mm. you know, she's here. Were you always gonna be an artist or what was the path like for that? Mine started with heartbreak. Mm. It was an overnight breakup when we were engaged, literally in the middle of planning our wedding and my world came crashing down. It really led me into exploring the deeper, darker side of things that failed me in that relationship, failed us. During that period of grief, all I could think about was painting. And I had never painted before, so it was such a daunting calling. And to just jump in was something that I decided because the best place to start and take risks is when you are dead. Word. You just, you can't go any lower, right? Yeah. There's some connection to pain and art. Right. I don't understand what that is. Like, so I grew up rapping. I stopped rapping when I got into the wine business, mm -hmm. but I've never stopped writing. And I realized that I would write my best stuff when I'm going through something. Sure. So sure. like, even right now, I'm actually in the process of divorce, <laughs> right? So I'm going through divorce and again, all these raps start coming up. So now I got like 20 songs or something like that just from, I don't, it's something about pain opening up your, your artistic self. There's a great French word, métier, one's craft or trade. I just like saying it, métier. And I wonder, when we put so much time into our métier, love, thoughtfulness, intention, doesn't it become art? My name is George Harvey and I'm a chef at Rue. I'm making a saffron salmon palusu. We taking the salmon and we are gonna sear it off. We're gonna make a coconut curry sauce and on the side we're gonna have saffron mashed potatoes. They're taking the food and elevating the palate a little bit further mm. and expanding it for people from different ethnicities, from different backgrounds, different races. For this dish, I brought the Kim Crawford New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc with me. <laughs> ah, Hi, Chef. How you doing? <laughs> All right, how you doing? This, this you right here? There it is. Oh, wow. See, I didn't know you was going to have a brother cooking Indian food. Oh, OK. Yeah. That's what we're doing in the background. <laughs> Sweet. Sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Let's, 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 try. let's try this out. I got to hit it with the sauce first. Yeah. See, it's the I, coconut curry. Oh, man, this looks very good. This is like perfectly prepared. I can't ever get my salmon like this. Do you this. like salmon? Love salmon. Yeah. Oh, man, this looks very good. Oh, yeah, this salmon is hitting. Yeah, this is one of my favorite dishes here. And those potatoes, wow. Oh, okay. I just love that it's a subtle play on multiple different spices coming together that you wouldn't even imagine coming mm. together. Even as an Indian, I'm always pleasantly surprised when I come here. Mm. And it gives me a lot of ideas to cook at home. Now, this is great. Like, especially you think Indian food, you think about how important the fragrance is mm -hmm. in the food. Also, with this Sauvignon Blanc, it has very, very fragrant aromas. Oh, that is incredible with it.
people don't think about the fact that like when you're tasting wine, your nose is in the glass. So what you're smelling is also influencing what you're tasting. Okay. So I also thought about that here with Indian food. I think Indian food, I think smells, you walk in the kitchen, you're smelling all these spices. You got the saffron here, nice herbal notes in the wine. This New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc is giving me Caribbean beach vibes with bright tangy mango, fragrant herbs, wet mineral flavors, dancing acidity with a ton of weight on the palate. Oh, this goes great. The slight like green notes in this wine, I didn't realize it was gonna go so well. This is real. I learned a lot about you and also how to be a, a better creative. Oh, I'm know. looking forward to seeing your work. <laughs> I really am. One day, one day, if it, if it does come it's out time to eventually. Release it. <laughs> well, thank you. This has been lovely. Thank you. What do you think it means if a wine is full body? Full-bodied wine, that's that's giving me like a, like a mouth party. Like mm. you, you put it in your mouth and you're picking up all kinds of different flavor Whole profiles. Body in your but... mouth, just tasting all the ingredients, the grapes, <laughs> swirl it up. <laughs> put that nose in there. Right, right. It's like the full, the, the full, full wine full, experience. I like how you said oh, the full okay. wine experience. Okay. The body just refers to the weight of the liquid. Okay, okay, nice. I like my wine big body, you heard? Thanks my for man. teaching me, y'all. <laughs> All right. One, two, three, and... Oh. <laughs> Jenny's taking me to a popular food spot run by a couple that fell in love because of, get this, butter. We started talking one night in the bar and a long conversation about like butter really being the best thing. <laughs> and um, we became a couple. I took an extended internship in a restaurant in Spain. Sarah came <laughs> with me to Spain. And we really got an appreciation of like street food. That was always our favorite stuff mm. to eat was just like casual, local. So food things. truck was gonna happen one way or the yeah. other. Yeah. yeah. The fat shallot food trucks was such a hit that Sam and Sarah opened this permanent location. All right, so I gotta know, what makes this buffalo chicken sandwich so special? By far the most popular sandwich at all locations. Okay. We've got like a brioche bun that we get from a local bakery. We make a blue cheese aioli, blue cheese and garlic and some vinegar pureed that goes into no like butter? a- No butter? No butter. I was just When it makes sense. And then uh, shaved celery on the bottom of the bun, crispy chicken tenders, fry them up nice and golden brown, mm. toss them in a house made buffalo sauce that has a lot of like chipotle pepper and smoke in it. There's kind of the, the heat of the sauce. It's not too crazy or powerful, but it's got a definite kick. Mm. Some of that smokiness in there and then the Blue cheese kind of really cools it off. Butteriness of the bun balances against it. And then, you know, that crisp celery on there helps give a little more texture to it as well. Mm. Those things all taste great together. Mm. Mm. Grab lots of napkins because the buffalo chicken is very messy. We can't get anything on this dress. You see what's going on. We can't get anything on it. Nothing. No. So that buffalo chicken sandwich is the perfect takeout food. So we hit in the gallery next door to meet Jenny's artist friend, Arthur. Now, Arthur is the embodiment of a redemption story. I gotta say, I came in, and this drew my eye immediately. <laughs> yeah, well, I used to print money on that. Really? Yeah. You printed money yeah, on yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, not for the treasury, though. I... <laughs> <laughs> this is a moment. So I brought the Naomi Pinot Noir with me. I have a feeling it's gonna go very well with a juicy story. Got some buffalo chicken sandwiches here. So I'm about I'm to eat the styrofoam. I know. <laughs> Let's I, try I wanna it. try this. Oh, this is so messy, oh. you guys. Okay, yeah, I'm this gonna try dope. to keep my gloves right, so clean. Let me... let me try this. I See, I don't know. Oh my god, that's delicious. Okay. This is the only sandwich I will eat with the blue cheese. I do not like blue cheese, but I absolutely love this sandwich. Me neither. I mean, this goes together so well. This is like the best chicken tender I've ever had in my life. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, this is this is really good. So when you take a bite of the sandwich, mm -hmm. feel the spice, take a sip of the wine, the spice in the sandwich just kind of comes alive and does something different. It's it really almost does. like a little chemical reaction happening because of how how present the fruit is. What I was anticipating was the heat increasing, but it doesn't. Yeah it brings out the flavor yeah, yeah. so that it, the flavor isn't hidden yeah. by the spice. This Pinot Noir is all about lifted fruit aromas of bright strawberry and jammy fruit, mocha, vanilla, and toasty oak with expressive boysenberry and dark cherry giving it complexity and depth. Think about this, like none of these yeah. colors are quite related. It's so contrasting, but they look so great together. Yeah. And that's what you're getting here with the intense fruit 
and the spiciness. Yeah. Okay. You know, so those are two completely different worlds, but they complement one another. Beautiful. I love so. the world's crash. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is, right? Okay. And Arthur tells us his world did crash. He spent a lot of time in jail after printing money for the mob. Old Italian took me under his wing, taught me how to print money, got caught, went to prison, mm -hmm. uh, and that's where I started painting. The art saved my life. It gave me purpose, you know? When I would step to that canvas, it, I would feel free. We can all change. And what about you? There had to be other things that, 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 that got you. Well, honestly, rapping was really always my first love. Like, rapping? It was, yeah, I, that was my thing. Like, Can you I, kick one right now? I got you. <laughs> after this, after this. <laughs> when you put art, wine, and food together, it triggers a certain type of introspection that's just hitting me different here in Chicago. I'm feeling like I might want to dust some things off, dig into my own art again. What does it mean when a wine has vibrant acidity? What does it mean when a wine has vibrant acidity? It's A, tart. Good to see you. Jenny invited me to her artist loft to meet Chef Donald Young, the youngest chef in the country to earn a Michelin star. His specialty is creating food as art, and he and Jenny been working all day to create this one-of-a-kind experience for me. So we're gonna be having a five-day braised short rib uh, with the inspiration of my childhood, along with a donut and the flavors of pho, which uh, was an inspiration of the chef I worked for for many years. I'm very excited, <laughs> I gotta say. <laughs> do you, so do you have a brick and mortar, or? So no brick and mortar. Uh, I kind of left that whole part of my life a few years ago. I decided to do private dinners, and I also put a focus into pop-ups, but I host them in secret locations twice a month. I get to have a life now, but I also get to really touch on my artistic value to it all. Jenny is working to extend Chef Donald's art on a plate onto the table that we're dining on. It's going to be a collaboration moment between these two talented artists. I am lucky. You were not playing. This really is an entire experience. Usually, when you go see an art piece, you can't touch it. I thought we would eat on it. It's titled Lethe. In Greek mythology, there are five rivers in the underworld, and Lethe was the river where if you drank the water, you forgot everything, including your past. And so this piece is about that illusion of the beauty of wanting to forget. Because when we're going through pain or trauma, we really wish that we didn't experience that. But the true story is we won't be here and who we are if we didn't go through what we did. For this once in a lifetime dining experience, I'm bringing the Rufino Reserva Ducale Chianti Classico. Oh, you are not playing. Oh my God, that looks so good. I like to treat the plate just like how <laughs> she treats her canvas because food is art. Even these sauces, this color wise, yeah, it like all a, looks beautiful full together. On Jackson Pollock happening here. So we have 7X Wagyu short rib that's been braised for five days in a pesh fruit lemongrass caramel, sitting on top of a black sesame puree, corn pudding, and a blueberry pudding. Pickled blueberries on there as well. Sauce perigu, which is a black truffle sauce. Growing up, how I used to eat was very plain. And to show for that, one of the things I used to always eat was vegetables out of a can. <laughs> so to add to our dish here, we have pickled corn served from a can. And to add that little bit of potato to it, mm. we have potato ice cream to go with it as well. What? Oh my god! Yo, it's this been is uh, crazy. frozen in liquid nitrogen to give you that really nice chill effect. We have a donut that's been fried in duck fat, stuffed with a foie gras ganache, topped with truffles and caviar to really accentuate the rest of the dish. We have a beef tendon that's been puffed like a chicharron, garnished with the flavors of pho on there, and then the broth itself with pho. Really adding on to her canvas here. You're a very humble dude, man. Thank I wasn't over there. We was just chilling. I didn't know all this was happening. <laughs> Thank you so much. Cheers, guys. Thank Surely. you. Okay, I love caviar, so I'm gonna go for that first. Mm, mm, mm. Sweetness with that caviar. Oh my god! Is mm, so good. This is incredible. I've never had like a dessert with caviar. I could have <laughs> done this in one bite. <laughs> it's so good. Mm. 
Wow. This really is an experience. Thank you so much, Jay. Yeah. This is this is cool. Yeah. Honestly, this might be the first time I've had Wagyu this way. The temperature, I've never had a, a colder it. Wagyu. It's a cold dish, perfect. No, but here, you're already smelling those cherries just mm -hmm. coming right out. You have these elegant tannins that you'll notice. It's almost like they just kind of part yeah. the sea and bring the berries right up. And then it's going with the sweetness well, the Wagyu of the, like the natural yeah. sweetness of the corn, sweetness of the ice cream. This is... And the savoriness of the meat. Of, yes, exactly. Oh, that's incredible. Funny, I didn't even know he was going to have these berries in here also. This I is, know. This is almost tailored perfectly for it. Oh, that goes really, really well with this. Like, yeah. truly. This Chianti Classico Reserva is giving Ooh. elegant aromas of violets, cherries, wild berries, and plums with hints of tobacco, clove, and eucalyptus, allowing for soft tannins and a lingering finish. Oh my God, this is delicious. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try the chicharron. Mm. Oh, this is good, like, oh all this here. Chef Young's creations feel like an edible canvas and taste like a revelation. It's the ultimate fleeting art form. It lives for a brief moment, but stays in our minds forever. And I'm in awe over how Jenny extended her work onto this table. Yo, I'm enjoying this. This is, this is too good. Do you feel like an artist now? I will say, like, here, I've definitely embraced my artistic side of life. Well, thank you for sharing your journey, and thank you for asking about mine. Oh, it means the world. Well, hopefully I can fit this table in my suitcase. Uh, <laughs> if you can do that, it's yours. All right. Thank oh, you. Oh, oh, it's been lovely. This was amazing. Thank you so much. Chicago left a mark on me. Me and people who knew how to use their work, their metier to blaze a path forward in life, is helping me in my own journey of expressing myself and my art fully. It might be time to go back in the studio.